Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, eventually, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, the bar is suspiciously empty. Well, it's not fully empty. We've got some hidden gems over here. Okay. And the reason for that is, is we're doing a list today. Uh-huh. And so here's what this one's all about. Okay. A couple years ago on Reddit, there was a post that started floating around where somebody claimed you only needed five bourbons on your shelf at any given time. It's a time. ridiculous premise. I don't <laughs> even like where this is going. Already disagree with it. Yes. And so uh, there's five categories. A little while after that, Matt Porter from ADHD Whiskey came up with his own five as kind of an answer to that. And he begged us to do our version of his list. Yeah, he didn't exactly ask us to, but we did it anyway. And that's what we do here at the Bourbon Show. You know, the, the, the whiskey channel nobody asked for. Um, <laughs> but so we know. actually did Matt's list of those five, but we never right. did the original list. Ah. It's been floating around the, the World Wide Web again. And Matt and Pat Miner over at Miner Stuff, go like, comment, subscribe. They challenged us to do this list. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do it. And so we've got a list here, and I should probably look at my phone so I make sure I get all the categories in order. I have my list on the phone, so I'm going to be looking at my phone. Yeah, okay. So the categories are a daily drinker, mm -hmm. one to impress your guests, mm -hmm. a cocktail mixer, okay. a Friday night special pour, kind of like I'm assuming like after a long week, you know, just sure. something you really want to nice and relax with, and then a special occasion. Gotcha. So do you want to get it started off or you want me to? So... I as is my custom with these lists. You're going to derail this, aren't you, already? Well, no, I'm going to participate. I'm just going to reinterpret some of the categories. And I think this is part of the fun because the first category is daily drinker. Well, yeah. A, I don't drink whiskey every day. I'm not but, sure it means but, you yeah, have to exactly. drink it every day. Yeah, but. I, but that's not the part I have a problem with. What I interpret that is, is if I'm going to do a sample or two of a couple of bourbons, I, I tend to do like one versus another. So mm -hmm. I do two very small pours, but I start with a control bourbon or a, like a benchmark. And I don't mean the brand. I mean, you know, just a yeah. baseline bourbon. Just a regular bourbon. So that would, that bourbon, I suppose, would fit into the, the daily, daily drinker. Because I have just Kind of meaning it's bit. a go-to. Every yep. time you go to it, you're going to like it. It's something that's always going to so satisfy, I, so scratch the itch. So I can calibrate my taste buds. Okay. And if it's off, then I know, well, maybe I'm not going to drink this expensive bourbon because Maker's Mark, I'm going to go to Maker's Mark, you know, for this list um, because that's what I'm used to. And if it's off, then I'm not going to drink anything else. Okay. I think you so, might be looking a little deeper into this yeah, than the original I, poster had that's intended. A, but a possibility. Yeah. However, I'm going to go with Maker's Mark 101. I tend to like this. This, I think, is a bit controversial, um, but... I don't think we've done a review of that, and we should, because that's a great bourbon. It, I, I really like it. But it is traditional Maker's Mark kind of profile, that if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But yeah. I like it. So. Good pick. All right, so my daily drinker, bam, I'm going to go with the regular Knob Creek 9-year. Um, I think this is just perfect for that. Readily available, up to $35, but sometimes down to $25. So it's usually around that $30 mark, so it doesn't break the bank. Nine years, 100 proof. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, totally. Never disappoints. It's just a great, I mean, I think this competes well with other more expensive bourbons. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of punches, I think, a little bit above its weight. Yep. And again, you can get this anywhere. Any bar, you know, you go to the airport or something like that, most places are going to have this. Yeah. So if it's kind of your go-to, it's always, always available. All right. So the next one, next category is the one to impress your guests. This is the one of the categories I have a problem with. Okay, we're on to category number two, and Greg's changing this one as well. No, I'm, I'm going to... Well, yes, I, yeah, I guess I am. Um, I don't... I'm not that guy. Like, I'm not going to... Yes, I do own a couple of really nice, kind of unicorn-y type bourbons, but I don't, I don't offer them to people to, like, make them feel bad or to, like... Again, I think you may be looking a little, well, that's a little deep into that's this. That's my life. I look at it, everything maybe a little bit too deep. But... Um, what I view impress your guests means mm -hmm. is show them something maybe they've never heard of that they're going to love. Sure. That's a, yeah, absolutely. So that's where I'm going with this. And everybody, if you're a bourbon geek, you've heard of this. This is 
Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Wild Turkey Rare Breed. I Fantastic. love Wild Turkey. And especially the ones that come, the special limited edition ones that come with the turkey yeah. on top. They're hard to find, but if, Very hard if to you find, find one, it's, it's definitely worth buying. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great... I mean, that's just, that's a great bottle for any category. It really it's is. It's just one of the yeah. best ones out there. Yep. So my impress your guests ones, the way I took that is like, is this for impress your guests who are whiskey enthusiasts or muggles? You mm. know, just like normies that, <laughs> sure. kidding, of course, yep. but, or people that, I, and I went with whiskey enthusiasts. Sure. Like okay. bourbon enthusiasts. Because yeah. if people don't really know anything about whiskey, there's nothing to really, you yeah. just find them a really nice pour. Yeah. You know, so I went with uh, to impress a whiskey enthusiast that would come over. Bam, Jack Daniels Coy Hill. This is one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. I will say that. Yeah, I agree. It's in the top tier. 141.5 proof, nine year. I'll probably never own another bottle of it again. And uh, so, yeah, I hate to see it dwindle, but it's just fantastic. Yep. And so I think for to impress the whiskey nerd, and it's not like it's an impress, like throw it in, you know, somebody's face that you have this cool bottle. I think that whiskey enthusiasts, as we hang out with each other, it's fun to break these bottles oh, out sure. because we all appreciate them. Yeah. You know? That's fair. As opposed to, I can see how that would, like, maybe if somebody's not super into whiskey, like, hey, check out this really expensive bottle. Yeah. You know? Look, a thousand dollar whatever yeah. that you can't afford or can't ever get. Yeah. Yeah. And we've never paid a thousand dollars for anything. Never. So. Yep. All right. Next, Next category. Up. I keep forgetting that we don't. Okay, cocktail mixer. All right, tell us how you overthought this one. And <laughs> so, because we have a bourbon channel, okay, and we you really buy, did. No, we, <laughs> we buy a fair amount of whiskey, and a lot of it's really good. Yeah. But once he, once we open it, we do a review. Then what do you do with it? And so then it goes into the kitchen, into the everyday kind of cabinet, um, and that I either have it neat, or if it's not that great, then it becomes a mixer. Sure. So I tend to use the everyday stuff, and, and so the cocktail mixer changes all the time. However, Evan Williams is a very good budget bottom shelf mm -hmm. bourbon that I genuinely love on its own, and it makes a great old fashioned. So I'll that's a there. great cocktail yeah. mixer. That's like yeah. a down the road yeah. yep. cocktail mixer. You go to a bar yeah. and get a cocktail. Chances are they're going to have that. Yep. And like you said, it's not a crappy bourbon that you're just trying to get rid of. It's a good cocktail mixer, but it's just fine on its own. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so for my cocktail mixer, and bam. <laughs> You've done a little too much mixing. The, well, yeah, was, this is an older <laughs> bottle, truth be told. I was gonna make a lamp out of it, still probably will at some point. That's why I have the empty here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't make a ton of cocktails, mm -hmm. but. Me either, to be honest. Bullet is budget friendly. It's around the $20 mark, 90 proof, so it's not gonna overwhelm the cocktail with proof. But it's a really good, bold, high rye flavor, and I think that works well in an Old Fashioned. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this is a fairly common bourbon to use in an Old Fashioned. I think that would be fair. And I think it would just stand up to most other cocktails as well. I haven't, like I said, I don't know a ton about making cocktails, but for me personally, this is the one I would, would choose for that. Okay. All right. Category number four. The Friday night special pour for you after a long work week, you know. You want to just relax and have a nice pour of whiskey that you really enjoy. Yeah, and so for me, where is it? Aha. I went with Four Roses Small Batch Select. There's plenty of so other, good. other bourbons that I certainly could have picked. But um, absolutely love Four Roses. And for whatever reason, I mean, they do have a budget model. Mm -hmm. But everything that I have from them tends to hit, like in my mind, as quality slash premium-ish. And so and this is what I would go for. That one certainly for, does, yeah. You know, the, the Friday night special pour. Um, was really hard to find in Minnesota, but it's becoming easier and easier. So now it's okay to, like, you, you, I'm not holding onto a bottle. Yeah, you know? I see that all the time yeah. now. Whereas before, it never was around. Right. So, so hopefully some other brands will take a cue from, exactly. from Four Roses and make some of their really awesome bourbons actually available. People will buy it. Yeah, totally agree. That's a great pour. Yeah. All right, my Friday night pour, bam, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. Kind of in the same family, I obviously, so. Wild Turkey as the, the rare breed here. Yep. This one, 110 proof. Mm -hmm. They were gone from Minnesota for a while. They've shown back up recently, so they're not impossible to find, but they're a little bit. So for that really nice, you know, after a long week pour, this one's just perfect. It's fantastic, everything from Wild Turkey is. Yep. 
And yeah, it just uh, it checks all the boxes for that. For sure. I totally agree. Like these, I view as the the high quality bourbon, but you're not afraid to drink it because you know you yes. can find another bottle. Absolutely. And same with that one. Yeah, it fits into that category of it's a special bottle. Yep. But it's not special because it's rare, or you're going to yeah. get charged, you know, yeah. allocated secondary prices yeah. or anything like that. So, all right. Speaking Last of category. allocated and secondary prices, potentially, <laughs> this is the special occasion bourbon. So. I decided not to go obscene. Sure. But um, oh, so good. I brought a small bottle just because I had to walk across the street carrying a bunch of bottles. And so yeah, got the three, seven, five. Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel, single barrel, barrel proof. Mm -hmm. um, they're great. Yeah. Um, they're, they vary in proof. And so find, you know, one that is you- that your, Is that the 131? 133, oh, six. I remember that one in particular is fantastic. It is. They all are a little bit different, obviously. They're single barrels. Mm -hmm. um, but I know there's some people out there who are not Jack Daniels fans. Mm -hmm. um, try the high proof stuff. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, for the, sure. The higher age, higher proof is really. It's not a bourbon legally seems... or technically if you're in Tennessee. And I'll leave that alone. But it's awesome. Yep. Um, I f yeah. I think the higher proof is where Jack Daniels really starts to kind of shine a little bit. Yeah. Those may not be available to everybody, but they're not. So they're kind of unicorny, but they're not impossible. Yeah. Especially not for us. We're, that's yeah, one of the ones where we're lucky enough where they're not everywhere, but you see them often enough where it's not like an allocation. And, and, the, and the, the 750 mil is usually 60 bucks. 60 maybe, to 70. Maybe yep. 70. Yep. Um, but Worth every penny. Yeah, absolutely. Outstanding. Okay, so my special occasion bottle is a bottle that I've talked about on the channel before. I bought it for a special occasion. And so here we are. Bam. Wild Turkey Masters Keep Revival. So this one is obviously, you know, this is a limited edition, came out a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Probably never see another one of these again. Nope. Um, I bought this to have a pour of on the night of my daughter's wedding. And so I've been very, very slowly, I mean, I've had this bottle for like two years now. I know. And uh, so I've been very, very slowly, just once in a while, I'll go to it or share it with somebody who's never had it. Um, which I've said before on the channel, that's the fun of having a rare bottle, mm -hmm. is to share that with people who appreciate it. So yeah, this is a good, um, just, you really want something special because this is so unique. Yeah, this totally. This bottle. 16 year wild turkey finished in 23 year old Oloroso sherry casks. It's definitely an experience for sure. Different than everything else on this list. Yeah, totally. It's A, it's a really interesting whiskey, but then it has the private, you know, story that's unique and personal to you. Yeah. So, yep, for absolutely. sure. So, let us know in the comments what you guys would, would put on your top five or your five, you know, for these particular categories. Yeah. I was thinking about maybe since we got called and challenged by the Miner Brothers to, uh, at Miner Stuff, again, go uh, like, comment, subscribe, call out a couple other channels. So I want to call out Bourbon School. 101. Yep. Bourbon Drop. And then who else? Who else should we throw so in the list? So how about list? Jill from Mediocre Bourbon Reviews? Okay. Um, she's got a very new channel. She's doing a really good job. I am unfamiliar, so I'll check that out as yeah. soon as we're done. So she's here. got like in the 40 subscriber range, so we need to get her up to you okay, know, get perfect. Her over 100. And it's called Mediocre Bourbon mm -hmm. Reviews? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So we're going to challenge all three of them. So if you guys want to go ahead and do the list, that'd be awesome. We'll check out your video. Absolutely. All right. Well, this has been our response to uh, our challenge on the Reddit list from 2021. The 2023 version on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.